Listen up, Gotham. This is Batman. Tune into the Bat Fanatic podcast with Sammy Warmhands. And if you don't, I'll be coming for you. Hey, everybody, it's the Dark Knight of Rap, Sammy Warmhands, and this is the Bat Fanatic podcast. Now, we promised you Heart of Ice, and it is coming. But there's a new DC film in theaters right now, and we have to talk about it. First, I want to shout out our Season 3 sponsor, TNK Comics and Collectibles. You can follow on Instagram for claim sales at the Nando Knight. That's N-A-N-D-O-K-N-I-G-H-T. Or on shortboxed.com slash Nando Knight. Catch him live at Near Mint Sundays in Anaheim, California on November 13th. But now, Ben and I head to the theater to talk about the new hierarchy of power at DC. This is Dwayne Johnson's Black Adam. You're doing a little Stevie Wonder. Are you good? I've just been sitting yeah. for a while. That's all. Yeah, okay. Ready to sit for another hour? Yeah. We splintered off. We're doing a duo episode, myself and Ben. I refuse to speak. Okay, cool. So it's basically just going to be me with an audience of one. We went to see Black Adam. We've done this before where we've got some episodes lined up, but then some new shit comes out and fuck it. Why not? Let's go see it. I probably wouldn't have seen this movie. I didn't want it to get spoiled for me necessarily. Yeah, this would have been a movie that like I, I wouldn't have watched until maybe I stumbled across it on streaming or something. It's sort of a red box movie, you know? Yeah. I know it's supposed to be a big deal. He's a huge box office draw, and it's like, this is going to change the hierarchy of power in the DC universe. I'm like, sure it is, buddy. It's been hyped for a long time, too, I think, before it was even made. Uh, oh, yeah, they're, they're going to make it, though. They're making it. It's going to come out. Well, I think he's been working on this for like seven, eight years, something like that, trying to get it made. It was a long time. and Because I liked Shazam a lot, and I know you, you haven't seen it. Yeah. I was only vaguely familiar with him from Kingdom Come. So I had pretty low expectations. I'm not even that familiar with Zachary Levi. You didn't watch Chuck? No. <laughs> no. So I just went to check it out and was like, that was the most fun I've had at a DC movie since, you know. Batman 89? <laughs> I mean, maybe, <laughs> or at least since like Dark Knight, you know, where, where that's like a thrill ride. Mm. This one is just like, they're not copying this one being Marvel, Shazam. but it, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Shazam it isn't copying Marvel. It's just like the tone of that character. He is a kid mm. who turns into this grown up dude. And so, just by his nature, it's going to be a little bit lighter and, and fun. And, uh, and I thought it was awesome. And then I bought the book, the Jeff Johns book it was based off of, and Black Adam's in it. I was like, oh, that's weird. They followed this very closely except for this part. Mm. Reading into it years later, oh, Black Adam actually lobbied to get him pulled out of that movie and Did you just his call own thing. Dwayne Johnson Black Adam? <laughs> Did I? Yeah. Wow. Black Adam lobbied. Yeah. Black Adam, from you know, he fights for his rights <laughs> as a character. You know this was fiction, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, he had uh, actually fought to get the character removed and put into its own origin story, which, I don't know. I mean, it'd be like if Nicholson insisted on making the Joaquin Phoenix Joker. Like, for your big screen introduction, that's odd a little bit, but it works. I mean, we'll talk about the movie itself, how well it works or whether it works in that way, but I think you can only pull it off if you have a lead that's as famous if as you're that is. famous. Yeah, yeah, you can't have it be like like Mark Strong, who was the villain in the first Shazam, I think. Oh, Dr. Savannah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Awesome actor, but he's not like... You're not going to get a that movie <laughs> about him. It's going to be, uh, you know, he was in, um, uh, what was that one? You know. you know, he was the villain in that movie, and he was the villain in this other movie, and you know, he does <laughs> accents. It just seemed very much like a Ryan Reynolds Deadpool, like, I am married to this character. We're going to do it exactly the way that I want. Yeah. I mean, for what it is, for being that, for being like a, it's not like a Zack Snyder movie, but it is kind of has that kind of grim, dark feel that the mainline DC movies have. Like, not counting, like, the Batman or the Christopher Nolan ones. like Sure, but the DC Extended Universe. Yeah. I had a point. <laughs> that must not have been very good. <laughs> All right, well, let's do, the, let's do the thing here. So this is Black Adam, 
2022, written by Adam Zweitskos. Zykiel, I think. Zastrowski. Rory Haynes and God, you guys are making this so hard on me. Sorab. Not sure. Usually vowels in other language only make one sound. So if it's an I, it's like a E. Okay. Those guys. <laughs> it like if I had heard of some of these people and I heard their names said out loud, it'd be much easier. But well, calling them out already. These, yeah. these no names with hard to say names. God. People are turning this shit off. The direct, <laughs> how do you say is it Jom? J A U M E? How do you say Wame? It could be Wame. This is the director's name. I should know this. Oh, oh so it's French? Is he? I don't know, maybe. I don't know. Jome. Jom. Like so, Jom. Jom. Like John. Yeah, Jom call it Sarah. So a lot of new blood to the DC <laughs> universe, I'll put it that way. Uh, no disrespect, I'm just an idiot. That was really disrespectful. White guy from Eugene, Oregon. <laughs> Culturally bankrupt Eugene, Oregon. <laughs> they a lot of hippies, though. Starring, of course, Dwayne Johnson, Aldous Hodge as Hawkman, Pierce Brosnan as James Bond, excuse me, Dr. Faith, <laughs> Noah Centineo. I recognize this dude. Uh, he's done some rom-coms on uh, Netflix, and I was like... Why do I know this guy? Is that Adam I looked Smasher? it up. And I was like, "Oh right, yeah, Adam Smasher." And I was like, "Oh right, he's the dude who, like, in his breakthrough role, everyone was like, this dude looks like young Mark Ruffalo. Mm. Like, someone needs to cast them together, please.'" That's funny that you say he was in rom coms because that's like half of what he's used for in this movie. Is <laughs> yeah, let's get a little romantic tension. Let's try. <laughs> let's squeeze that in here. Sarah Shahi as Adriana, uh, Quintessa Swindle as Cyclone. And Marwin Kanzari as Ishmael. Okay. I went to see this Friday early afternoon so that I could hopefully have the area to myself. I don't know if you guys have Cinemark where you are, but there's big fat dividing walls between each row of the theater. And not only did I have my own row, but the blacked out wall behind me allowed me to actually take notes. Oh, wow. So I have... Plot notes like we normally do. And you recorded the film, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I filmed the whole thing. It's up on my uh, Patreon. No, just kidding. <laughs> we do have a Patreon, though, you know, if you want to show some And love. it's only five bucks to watch the movie there versus <laughs> seven to 15 in a theater. <laughs> yeah, right. Depending on your area. We open in ancient Kondok, which I just have to say right out of the gate, the first two scenes of this movie are X-Men Apocalypse. We had talked about uh, before yeah. going, like, yeah, this looks sort of like X-Men Apocalypse vibes in terms of setting and feel, I guess. Sure. But literally the first two scenes. So we have slaves mining for some powerful mineral. Did you catch the name of it? Unobtainium. <laughs> Is that real? No, it's that's from Avatar. It's okay. Eternium. Uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. Get um, it forever. A, sla a slave who finds it is killed when he asks for the reward he was promised, right? And the uh, child witnesses this. He uh, attempts to inspire a revolution among the other slaves. He runs up to the top of the mountain, and he holds up the Jay-Z, Rockefeller, oh, Diamond Cutter Diamond thing. Dallas Page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's facing execution for this after they catch him as the, the guillotine or the sword or whatever is going to come down on his head vanishes turns into smoke to mist and he's in front of the council of wizards in shazam so right away in the first like five minutes i'm going like okay there's some connective tissue here like i've i've seen this place before again ben hasn't he sucks unrelated i do suck and i haven't seen it <laughs> one is not the cause of the other okay okay now they give the child the powers he defeats the king whole place explodes he disappears, the new champion disappears, and the uh, king is buried with the magic crown so that no one can find it. Because it's an evil crown. Yeah. It makes good people bad, and bad people have boners for bad. Yeah. Yeah. Looks cool. Looks like a Lord of the Rings prop. I don't really know. But. Turns you into a CG monster, which is cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like a, from a, the intro to... A Blizzard game or something like that, the movie that plays beforehand. So then we go to present day conduct. We get a cut from one of my favorite, you know, my favorite album of all time, Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, Bull yeah. with Butterfly Wings I did comes immediately in. Think of you, and I was on. like, "Ooh, I'm listening." Cheap, <laughs> cheap shots. You're like cheap nostalgia. Fuck you. Fugitive lady is trying to find this crown. 
there's a shot where she's sort of being smuggled in the back of a car. This kid skates up and is now distracting the guard. They got to deal with this kid. And it's like, can I fucking go or what? You know, and they, they play it off very well so it doesn't get, she doesn't get found out in the back. And then initially, I don't know who any of these people are. I'm like, are they smuggling weapons? Are they good like, guys? Are they bad guys? Yeah, is there a bomb in there someplace? Are um, any of these people Black Adam? <laughs> she finds where the uh, crown is hidden because it's clearly labeled. <laughs> There's an inscription that says, uh, hey, uh, uh, this is our hiding spot. Maybe don't look here. We'd appreciate it. It was all upside down. That's why they were all oh. they were looking in the exact opposite place this whole time. Right. So she finds it, and as they're there in the tomb, these men betray her. So her brother was the driver, right? He's outside in the car. Guy turns on him. Guys inside are turning on her. They want to get the treasure for themselves, you know. <laughs> the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> yes. So with a gun to her head, uh, she starts reading the... Uh, Please tell my son only in darkest of night <laughs> through brightest of... <laughs> Hold on, let me finish. <laughs> yeah. She starts translating this thing that's carved into stone and then yells, Shazam! <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Weird last words. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm 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 into it. And uh, Black Adam appears. He kills everyone without saying a word. I'm talking like just disintegrating people, ripping them into pieces. We talked about this with Ted, where there's a family sitting next to me. Oh. Some of the kids, I feel, are young because I just hear, once that starts happening, hear a, what? <laughs> what was it? <laughs> Like, maybe they just weren't expecting the, the brutal murder. I wondered when you said you were going at 10 in the morning. I was like, now, I think I got the sweet spot because I went on a weekday. But I was like, I think if you go in the morning, that's when the most people are going to bring, like, their young-ass kids. And probably. old people if they're going to go see a movie, too. Yeah. It wasn't that packed. I, I had, like, at least two seats on either side with nobody that's good. there. But I'd have to hear that and think, like, Multiple times throughout the movie when people are getting murdered. Like, <laughs> like, you're going to have a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> like, Is he doing that? So, yeah, he kills this group of guys, and then they go outside. There's Humvees and little tanks and choppers, and, and he kills his whole army in just a spectacular fashion. Again, I don't think he's said a syllable at this point. He's just destroying everything. He said a thing that in the trailer was in English, but it's in... oh. Kandaki, well, whatever they speak, <laughs> he's like, your magic is weak. Oh, right, and right. He's getting shot by it them. It was and, subtitled, yeah, because yeah, he saw the guns coming at him, mm -hmm. and he's like, I don't know what this projectile thing is, but weak, not impressed, as Superman would say. It reminded me of Sin City, which we were just talking about off air, because he's just fucking decimating these people, and you're seeing it, you know? It's like, oh, I catch your grenade, I put it in this guy's mouth. <laughs> Yeah, you know, whatever. I just thought when Marv goes, I love hip men. No matter what you do to them, you don't feel bad. <laughs> no. Yeah, these guys are definitely fodder. Now, somehow, after being completely unfazed in this battle, Adam flies away and then immediately falls down, eats shit, and passes out on the ground. Well, he gets hit by an Eternium rocket because he's like going to be a tough guy and just catch it and then let it blow up. What? Did you see this movie? No. No. Well, I, to be fair, I was on my phone taking <laughs> that's, notes. Yeah. That's, no, yeah. No, the, he did get hit with something else? After he kills almost all of them, he stops Sarah Shahi and her brother in the van. Yeah. And they have a little moment. They're like, behind you. Yeah. And a guy busts out a rocket launcher and shoots him. Yeah. He catches the rocket and he looks at it and it says Eternium and it has like the blue Eternium goo oh. in it. Oh. You know, it's funny. I didn't look closely at that because that was a shot that was in the trailer. Uh -huh. They're like, look out and him catching the thing. And so I probably looked down. Right as yeah, and it's like he that. thinks this is going to be like everything else, and it's not going to do anything. But because it has the Eternium, that's what gives him the wound. God, it makes him drop from the sky. Okay, all right, then I won't make fun of that. <laughs> I, I did want to point out exactly. I rescind the moment. my criticism. Yeah, how dare you? This movie's perfect. The uh, it is pretty good. The exact moment the kid made the sound of like, "What have I got myself into?" It's when he kills the first guy. Because when he kills the first guy, he picks him up by his throat. Yeah, and then like electrocutes him, slowly disintegrating the flesh off of his body. Yeah. And he's like, it seems very unpleasant. <laughs> you know, I could think of as a little kid, the thing that terrified me most of, of seeing Batman, which is maybe the first grown-up movie I had seen, 
was when Nicholson is giving the joy buzzer yeah. to the guy and he's just that charred skeleton afterward. Like it's a lot like that. You actually see this guy's skin and muscle fall off his body yeah. <laughs> before it's, his bones it's crumble extreme. in a heap. Yeah. I'm not sure what folks thought they were getting into, but I feel like generally common knowledge that this was gonna be a, a villain story, a dark well, story. Yeah, and they know? talk about like I in the trailer, like I kill people. You yeah. know, you shouldn't kill people while I do and that kind yeah. of stuff. It ain't Cruella. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, Amanda Waller shows up, which is cool. We've seen uh, Viola Davis here and there in the DC universe. And it's just an exposition scene introducing the new team. There's even a Henry Winkler cameo, which is neat. <laughs> they converge at Xavier's mansion, <laughs> excuse me, Hawkman's mansion, and they board the X jet. And I mean, Hawkman's <laughs> jet. And um, nothing familiar about any of this stuff. I will say um, that jet looks really cool. Looks cooler than the Black Hawk. It looks just like it to me. Well, because it's probably also based on an SR seventy one. Yeah, yeah. Black that, Hawk, that I think pop punk band from the year two thousand. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I just like the way the metal looks and the interior design of it. And like the I like when they walk on. They're like, oh yeah, every bit of it is made from nth metal. Like, stupid comic book bullshit. Even down to the screws. And I was like, wait a second. So one type of material is used for everything. This is my Evan Vaught thought. I was like, <laughs> this one type of material was used for everything. So like, if you got cargo nets or something, they're made out of that. And the, metal. Yeah. How did like, you make the screws out of nth metal? What <laughs> yeah, did you use you to fashion it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. I think Doctor Fate's helmet might also be nth metal. Maybe. Oh. That's like a go-to DC extreme universe material. Got it. It's yeah. their adamantium, vibranium. Vibranium. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. So Adam wakes up in an unfamiliar place. He's in a kid's bedroom. Keep in mind, this dude's from ancient times, so he doesn't know what the fuck this place is. He uh, blasts a Superman poster on the wall. He's got a Jim Lee Batman poster right behind his head. And the kid comes in, and uh, again, some of this is going to be lost on you, but he acts a lot like Freddy in Shazam. I don't know if you've read any like Shazam. I saw, I saw a review or two of it, so I'm vaguely but, familiar. But if you've like read any of, of the books that he's in, like... The foster kid that he stays with, Freddy. He's like excited about him being a hero. and He's a super fan. Uh, oh, check it out. I got this fucking bullet that bounced off Superman in my drawer. Oh, check it out. I got this real batarang that was used, you know. Uh, found it on eBay and shit. Like, so he's a super fan type. And this kid strikes me as very much like that. The kid felt very much also like a try and give children a window into the movie. Yeah, and I think it was done in sort of a, the way we grew up in like an 80s you know, 90s movie sort of way that actually just works. Like, it felt like Terminator 2 for the first chunk of it. Yeah. The plucky kid teaching the unemotional... <laughs> murder fish machine. Fish out of water murder <laughs> machine, yeah. Hey, no, don't kill him. Yeah. So the kid shows him this history book with the legend of Teth Adam, like their hero from ancient times. And he's like, this is you, right? And, you know, and he retells kind of the story. Adam walks through walls, Played in a similar way as like Vision walking through walls, except he actually just destroys them like the Kool-Aid man. They ask for his help, and he feels like Ben Polanski, zero sentimentality. <laughs> I have no obligation to help you people. Everything fades. <laughs> Nothing lasts forever. Then out in the real world, the kid gets caught flashing his Rockefeller Revolution... Diamond Dallas Page. ...gang sign in public, and... Uh, and they catch him. We had seen just prior to this, when he comes out, bursts through the wall in the apartment, he sees this Clint Eastwood scene on TV, you know, having a showdown and the hand right over the holster and stuff. And so when he comes out to save the kid, and uh, I think the mom actually gets a good shot in the face with, uh, she hits, she hits a, a guy with a skateboard or, yeah. or something like pretty good. But then Adam shows up, right? And he sees the guy about to draw his gun and, and he's like, oh, shit, this is just like that thing I saw. Because he doesn't know what a gun is, but he blasts him just like he blasts the He TV. shoots like five or six people. And that was cool because I was a little worried that every fight scene was going to be the same. And a lot of them are similar, similar kind of like the slowdowns and the pans and stuff like that. But this being maybe the second big fight scene. In the it, first like 15 minutes. Yeah, and having it be different in the sense where this one's all like, you were saying like a Western shootout. Like he, he kills six guys and it's sh shown pow, pow. very quickly. It's yeah. not done in slow-mo. Yeah. yeah. So there's a quip here about you can't kill them first and then say the catchphrase because they can't hear the catchphrase and so you got to do it in the other order. Yeah, that, like, that was a very Terminator. My bad, you know. 
the JSA arrives, the Justice Society of America, which brand new to the DC Extended Universe. When we were talking about the trailer, I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't know that I'm really invested in any character in this movie. And um, you said something about Hawkman, and I was like, honestly, Hawkman does look pretty cool, though. <laughs> you actually said, like I just did, actually, yeah. Hawkman's pretty cool. Yeah, you mocked me for using the word actually, which... Because um, I, I made the joke of like, hey, it has all your favorites, Hawkman, <laughs> Dr. Fate, other people. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, actually, Hawkman was great. I really dug it. I think Hawkman's the guy I'm into now. I'm not yeah. into Batman anymore. Yeah, that's definitely what I said. I yeah. can easily scratch these bat symbols into Hawk symbols. After seeing the trailer that I was just going to sell my whole collection. So Hawkman and Dr. Fate show up. They take on Black Adam. Dr. Fate uses a very, very cool like Mysterio trick. And he like flips the fucking scenery all around him so it looks like Ancient the ancient, yeah. yeah, exactly. And so he's like, oh my God, I'm back, I'm home, I'm whatever. You know, and then while he's sort of off guard, that's when they- He stares at Hawkman as Hawkman flies directly at him, <laughs> yeah. giving him a full <laughs> seven seconds to do nothing. Yes. And uh, Cyclone and Adam Smasher, which I got to say, two Adams in this story, it would be one thing in writing, because you see A-D-A-M, mm. A-T-O-M, but when I'm taking my notes, I'm like, God damn it, I gotta write Smasher. And then they start calling him Smasher in the movie. That's funny. I didn't even make that connection. Yeah. I was just like, there's another DC hero who goes big and small, I think. And that's just the Adam. Well, and I just watched Injustice again last night. And uh, he was in that yeah. too. And I was like, oh, wait. Yeah, there's two Adams. And then Black Adam. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> okay. Huh. Interesting. We're sort of. Um, not quite digging the depths like Suicide Squad did, you know, but um, we're going I, a little deep. I've never heard of either Cyclone or Adam Smasher. So they join in the fight. Fate becomes aware that the fugitive woman, the kid's mom, Adriana, has the crown on her person. And at this point, I'm starting to feel like we're maybe 20 minutes into the movie. We have like nine characters. I don't really know... Who the fuck is who? Even on this, I don't know the kid's name who's like a central character. Adam. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I almost wish there had been a little bit of Suicide Squad, a little backstory or something. Yeah, I don't think it needs to be like Suicide Squad, they try but it just to give means you... like what a better movie would have, which would be a little more introduction to the characters you're supposed to care about, why you're supposed to care about them. Because I, I was in the same boat at this point where I was like, it's neat, but I don't. What am I worried about? Who, yeah. Who do I care about? If Adam's the title character, but then these guys are the, the heroes coming in to fight him, am I rooting for what? The murder machine <laughs> or, the, or the people who don't seem to care about collateral damage who are supposed to be the real good guys? Because this, this like straddled the line where sometimes I felt like, obviously there are times where the movie was self-aware about that, where in like a Adam Smasher knocks over a big statue or something. It's like, sorry, guys. And Hawkman's like, I'm going to talk to you later. Yeah. But there's other times where it feels... Actually, they had a running joke of like, you and me. Yeah. I mean, when he like shit. hits him or bumps him. You and me, three o'clock under the willow trees. <laughs> you better be small then. I'm not going to fight big you. <laughs> but there are other times where, unironically, they were like smashing cars and destroying buildings and stuff like that. And that felt like something out of like the boys or something where the whole point is superheroes suck. Mm. Like they don't work in reality because stuff like that. Yeah. They're here to save the day in a country where no one asked them to be and they're just smashing everything <laughs> up. But they're, they're only like halfway commenting on that. I think what's the most interesting commentary on it is the citizens are still rallying behind Adam. They don't want this outside help. You know? Yeah, and they hate the mercenaries that have occupied there. It's yeah. mercenaries have occupied the country. It's not even like another government. It's just yeah. guns for hire. Yeah. Just a free for all. Intergang, which is a terrible. I know that's it's <laughs> it's not made up for this movie. I know it's a DC thing, but it's a really bad name. So Dr. Fate multiplies himself in this fight like Agent Smith. And then Ant Man goes giant man and punches Black Adam into the ground. This is when he does break through. He flies up, hits him in the face, and knocks over that statue, right? Which when Superman comes back to life and they're fighting at his monument, you know, mm -hmm. and like a remote. There's so many things where like I felt that 
Dwayne Johnson watched all the superhero movies. Uh-huh. And was like, ooh, we could use a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little yeah. bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Yeah, and that, some of it's just that the the source material isn't the most wholly original stuff. However, I, there's a lot of direct film adaptations that are like, we did this, we did that. Yeah, and I don't, I don't, without really knowing, to me, it, it seems less like an homage and more just like, yeah, it's just you do that thing also. <laughs> yeah, whatever, it works. We'll just do that. Because the in that first uh, Black Adam scene outside when he's fighting all the the mercenaries and the tanks and the missiles and stuff, that felt very reminiscent of the Flash stuff, which also was just kind of a ripoff of the Quicksilver stuff from yeah. X-Men 3 or 4 or something like that, or Days of Future Past or Future something. Future Past, I think, was his first one, yeah. They didn't focus so much on the fact that he was fast, but that was obviously why he could do what he did in that scene because he was faster than everyone else. Yeah, yeah. So he gets away, the crowd cheers, Adriana gives them an earful for basically ignoring decades of war crimes and now showing up to stop Adam, who is their savior. Hasn't even done anything yet. Yeah. Nothing bad. And so very quickly here, it goes from in this same conversation, her defiantly saying, fuck you, we don't want you here. Where were you when Intergang showed up? Yeah, right. When the gang occupied our country. Yeah. Within 30 seconds... She's going, I'm your only hope of getting through to this guy who I also just met, so come with me. Yeah, and, and they're like, actually, if you come with us off screen, we're going to tell you the real truth. And they yeah. don't know that he's actually not good. You won't see this, but... Yeah, it, it happened so fast. It was like, did I... Were you brighting again? Look you away look down? for too long? I don't know. Yeah, but it, I ser- seriously, is in the same conversation of like, fuck you, never, you know, just complete role reversal next thing she's walking up the steps to adam and they're behind her it's like hey maybe you hear him out and he's like why are you with them <laughs> that could be on me i don't know no for a two hour long movie there is a lot that's just kind of like <laughs> glossed over she comes up to him and says the legend is a lie isn't it taking like you said whatever they just explained to her <laughs> these people that i didn't like a moment ago now i trust them they make some valid points <laughs> yeah. though yeah And uh, he, in fact, had killed countless civilians when he had his revenge on the king. He exploded in uncontrolled rage. Yeah. And that the Council of Wizards had deemed him unworthy. They wanted to revoke his powers. And it looked like that he killed the rest of the council except for Shazam. Yeah. And in Shazam, there was only the one dude left. Shazam. So, yeah, it makes sense that that would be how that happened. The kid comes home. He's got the crown in his bag. Like the mom's was like, yo, take this fucking get it out of here. And Ishmael, one of the, the traitors in her party in the beginning, when they went to the tomb, is standing there in the kitchen. And the kid doesn't know that he's a traitor. He's like, oh, hey, man, how you fucking been? I thought you were dead. Great to see you. Yeah. And then the uncle is sort of like giving him the side eye, like, get the fuck out of here. Isn't it crazy that we don't know where the crown is? Yeah. Don't have it. Don't know where it is. How weird. And he's like, oh, mom sent me here to keep it safe. It's like, you fucking idiot. So yeah, uncle gets shot in the gut. Kid runs out. Chase ensues. Adriana begs for Adam's help, who swoops in to save the kid again. There's a bit here where he says, release the child. They drop him and he falls, you know, however many stories, right? Terminator moment. Kid says, uh, maybe a little more careful with your word choice next time. And I'm like, that's straight out of the dark night. Very poor choice of words. It just felt like the... What the hell are you doing? He'll live. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, definitely. Adam Smasher jumps out of the jet here. And goes, giant man, (laughs) this gag of him landing in the middle of the street while all the cars are coming by, right? And then him trying to make sure they don't crash into each other or into his feet, just grabbing them gently like Hot Wheels was really funny to me. I actually really liked that. That might be the best rendered visual effect in the movie, him, as Mm. a big thing. Just like the texture of the mask, the texture of everything looked good. He looked, I mean, like Deadpool or something is what his suit reminded me of. Yeah, but... Because it had a little face animation to it, I thought. Well, again, jumping ahead to the end villain, or just a lot of the other stuff, the CG looked very fake. Not bad, but just Didn't like, bother me at all. Didn't bother me, but that, that's why I point out him, because that was the best-looking CG to me. Like mm. That looked the most like a real thing existing in this world. 
that didn't actually exist. Like Dr. Fate looked fake a lot of the times. Well, to my primitive brain, I was uh, right in there with them where they wanted me to be. I, I wasn't questioning it, really. I saw a couple people, I think on Reddit, shitting on the CG, and then I went to see it, and I was like, I don't know what these fuckers are talking about. I don't think it's, it's bad, great. but I just don't think it's like, I was about to say it's not great. I mean, it is, it's amazing what these people can, <laughs> yeah, what these right? Come on. nerds can do Come with on. their computers. But, but it's still, it's whether so like... 2,000 people <laughs> slaving away to do this. How many... Uh, Dollars worth of electricity running these machines. Yeah, no bathroom breaks. Yeah. All night sessions Broken to cram for this deadline. Yeah, exactly. Kids' birthdays, divorces. Missed. Yeah, and you're just like, nah, could have been better. It could have though. That's my. <laughs> it doesn't. It's like if yeah, we had a thousand people paint uh, the Kentucky Fried Chicken logo on this giant wall, and it's <laughs> it's all right. It's really big. It took a long time, a lot of work. So Smasher accidentally knocks out Hawkman because he's stopping the cars on the ground. Then he stands up, and he puts his arms up like, wow, I did it, and he fucking accidentally backhands Hawkman. He seems mad inexperienced. Like, if you look at the team dynamic, he's sort of like when Spidey joined the Avengers of like, I don't know if he should necessarily be here yet. And he's like, I can't see with the mask. I'm sorry. Uh, it's designed for Henry Winkler's head. Different yeah. shape. <laughs> Um, Black Adam loses the kid. He's going after like all these different little um, pod racers, speed racer things. Like they're like Star Wars things that these like from uh, guys are flying away. Return of the Jedi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't think of what they're fucking called. The Ewok shit. Yeah, man, Ender. That bothers me. He's catching a bunch of them. He's killing all the dudes, and he doesn't see the kid. They get away, and Fate is like trying to talk to him because he can. Professor Exit, you know, talk to people who aren't there. And Hawkman this whole time was like, stop killing people. <laughs> this is extra ju judicial. Don't do this. <laughs> like, um, I'm pretty sure your organization has America in the yeah. title. Hmm. But uh, yeah, he can't find the kid. They get away. Fate is talking to him like, okay, well, grab one of the dudes and find out. And it's like, yeah, they're, they're dead. And this is one of those moments where like, as he says that, one of the dudes he threw is still flying in the background and then like hits a mountain or whatever and no one made it yeah they didn't make it and at this point i think it's fair to say that the majority of the scripted jokes there might be a couple visual gags that work but the majority of the scripted jokes to me felt very flat and i didn't not just me but the theater didn't laugh yeah i don't feel like any heard any laughter i'd say like a one out of four would actually get a laugh I mean, obviously, movies are all written and they're all made up, but these felt very like, okay, we need a joke here. What do the Marvel things do? Oh, it's like a... Yeah. Oh, I said it in the wrong order. <laughs> oh, that was the thing. Oh, yeah. I said only half the thing or... It's like they approached it mathematically. They right? did. We've got all these things on the whiteboard that we have to include. Where do they fit? Like checking all the boxes and being a crowd pleaser in general, being something that's very familiar and digestible was as important as anything else for this movie. Yeah, 100%. And I, I think that's part of what holds it back. And that's not unique to this movie. That's big budget movies and superhero movies especially. Yeah. They spend so much money on them that they're so desperate for them to succeed that that makes them unwilling to take chances. And he's had so many like bold claims leading up to this movie too that I, I think that... It's just designed to be the most universally, like, general audience accepted sort of popcorn movie. And it hides under the veneer of its violence. Of a badass, like, yeah, like oh, dark this guy movie. Like, yeah. rips arms off and electrocutes people. But you set that aside, and it's just kind of the same as all these other ones. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. All right. So Adam returns to the family's apartment. Dr. Fate makes a joke here. Oh, they don't have doors in ancient conduct or whatever. And um, no one laughs in the theater. But I thought Black Adam's response was kind of funny. He's like, oh, of course we do. How do you think we so got we into our rooms? rooms. Yeah. You know. I, I, yeah, I know. I like it didn't work for me. But, but it is the same, like, just kind of like cut rate Marvel joke. <laughs> yeah. In a movie that otherwise doesn't feel like a Marvel movie. So it's a, a weird combination. Well, yeah. And he's sort of like, <laughs> not quite to the extent of like when David Ayer 
was asked about Marvel, and he's like, "Fuck Marvel, DC forever," you know. <laughs> but he's uh, been a little like that, you know. Uh-huh. He's been, "No, DC is dark and fucking. We're gonna take it all the way, and it's gonna be brutal and uh, you know." And then it's like, "But we're gonna also reuse the Vision door gag." And I'm gonna need at least three popular songs from our culture <laughs> to put here and there, so people remember Suicide Squad and Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Adam grabs Hawkman's prisoners there at the apartment because they're all kind of meeting up back at this spot. He grabs them and flies them up into the sky to interrogate them, saying, like, whoever speaks first, you get to stay up here. (laughs) You know, I'm dropping the other fucker. So um, that happens. Hawkman's got to go up there and catch the guys. And he drops the other one. Dr. Fate, after just saying... You killed everybody. We need that information. It's crucial. Now they have two people with the information. Murder Machine Man takes them away. Is going to drop them from the sky. And Dr. Fate just goes, I think I'll sit this one out. <laughs> he, now that he's known Black Adam so long, he knows yeah, he'll make the he right decision. Yeah, he can trust him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He touched his helmet and saw that he was going to make the right <laughs> The The two of them now fight and just destroy this poor lady's apartment. That was cool. <laughs> because of house, because of because I hate her. I felt and I hate bad. Her I was like, apartment. man, this fucking this poor kid's room is getting she, she's tore an up. idiot. She should know. No, I thought it was cool only because it was in such a tight enclosed space. Yeah, which made it kind of fun. A little Kill Bill two yeah. action versus all the other fight scenes in this movie all are like big green screen things. Yeah, yeah. Don't really feel like they're happening in a place. That's true. They're like, all right, where could we do a tight practical fight? Oh, let's just fuck up these people's home. This, yeah. this DC merchandise. <laughs> And then uh, while they're busting shit up in the kid's room, they accidentally find the crown. I believe it's like a punch through something. Through a dresser. Holy shit, uh, my hand is now in the center of the crown. Adam and the JSA together now go after Ishmael to rescue the kid. They team up to save him. There's an excellent edit, speaking of soundtrack, of the uh, anti-Semitic hero Kanye West. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought of. <laughs> There's an, a horrible timing to use this song, but like an excellent edit of his song Power because normally when you have a popular song in a movie or in a trailer, even the Batman, which I rewatched last night, it's like they let the intro guitar go five times and then the vocal starts. I'm like, mm. just start it a bar later. Quit chopping up very recognizable songs. Uh. It's weird. You want us, here's a sense of familiar. Well, that's exciting. Oh, wait, why'd they do that to it? Now I'm taken out of the movie. Yeah. This is one of the most tightly chopped soundtrack songs I've ever heard because he gets two lines. He says, I'm living in the 21st century doing something mean to it and then cut to the last line of the verse but every superhero needs his theme music and then it cuts to the chorus and no no one man should have all that power and I was like, that was fucking well done. Well, I don't know that song very well so I didn't notice that but what did immediately distract me is like you said of just like worst person to have (laughs) their song in the movie especially right now. Yeah. (laughs) Because I immediately was not in Kandak anymore. I was here at home in the world we live in. (laughs) So Adriana volunteers the crown to Ishmael to save her son. This is the trade she's going to make. And then he reveals that he is the last descendant of the king. There's actually a good beat of suspense here. He shoots the kid anyway. And they're through some weird force field thing that's separating them. Which They have a Eternium shield up. Got it. Which prevents anyone from getting through. And then Dr. Fate also throws a shield up. But I think they break that pretty easily. I could use just 10% more explaining what the fuck they're doing sometimes. It all comes back to you missing that first <laughs> rocket. Now everything else is like... <laughs> everything is a mystery. Is he allergic to blue? What is like, it? Uh, yeah, because I showed up to the movie 10 minutes in, yeah. and then I lost everything. I respect that. It should still be good. <laughs> if, it's, if it's a good movie, it'll still be good. Actually, this is how close I cut it, because I was downtown, and I bought the ticket in the car on the way there. I bought it 10 minutes after the showtime going like, okay, I can get there in about 10 minutes. I got there in 15 minutes. I walked in as the WB logo was on the Uh screen. I was like, thank God. (laughs) But uh, he shoots the kid anyway. Ishmael fires the gun. 
close range, maybe three feet away. Black Adam goes fucking hyperspeed flying towards him, right? But it genuinely looks like, and we've seen a lot of violence in this movie. I'm like, oh, they might actually kill the kid. Yeah, I felt the tension too. Yeah, they make you believe it for a second. And he barely makes it, but then he gets, as Adam catches the bullet, he flies a little too far, kind of like Flash when he's like just trying to get there. Mm. And he goes a little bit too far, so he winds up behind him. Dude is putting the crown on. Black Adam goes into like rage mode. Like sort of rage mode and he starts electrocuting everyone. He basically fries the dude, right? Fries all the guys, including him. Okay. And then because Hawkman comes in and protects Adriana. Oh, right, and, right. Uh, Adam Smasher protects the kid. and Yeah. But they're all getting zapped. So we see the fried corpse. And then Adam is revealed to have been the father, the father. of the kid that was up for execution Which who became was the champion. completely ruined by the trailer of this movie that played before everything I've seen in the past two months. Every trailer he says, my son sacrificed himself for me. So there was no excitement, no suspense. It also made me know that the beginning was like not completely reliable as far as a backstory. Why did that need to be in the trailer? That there's no reason. You don't need other than to make people who like maybe wouldn't see it like, oh, he's fighting for his kids. I don't really like movies like this, but I have kids. And <laughs> I can connect with that. Mm, yes, I'm simple. I can understand. <laughs> no, I totally felt the same way. I think an egregious offender we can agree on is that Jared Leto was in the Snyder Cut oh, trailers, yeah. and we were like three and a half hours into the movie going, okay, well, where is he, right? So in the beginning of this movie, and they're showing the flashback origin and the kid and he gets his powers or whatever and I was like I could swear that his dad was the rock just then I could hear it yeah and then uh, and, like you know, they kind of show him from, cut, the, from the side his voice is kind of thin so he little, doesn't sound like him normally it's a little smaller frame you know and I was like God, I thought that was him and it's like, I guess maybe you know sometimes a guy will play like his own father in a flashback or something you know Kevin Conroy would voice Thomas Wayne or something yeah. like okay maybe it's that and I'm watching the whole thing and I was like the like, kid doesn't die. When did the kid, does a kid die in the future? How the fuck, you know, then it's your 15th action sequence and you, you kind of forget about it. But when they went back to it, I'm like, oh, God damn it, you're going to do it now? That would have been an okay twist. But why tell us that yeah. going into it? Yeah, because it was completely ruined. Yeah. It was presented to us like it was a twist and we're supposed to be surprised and conflicted, but yeah, it wasn't. Oh, man, I saw this great movie where um, Bruce Willis died, and uh, this kid, <laughs> he, like, sees ghosts, right? And uh, so, like, he, he talks to Bruce Willis Death becomes all the her. time. You know, it's crazy, you know? The Last Boy Scout? What movie is this? <laughs> yes, yes, that's the one. So, yeah, we see that the whole trailer bit, the kid actually volunteers his power. He says, Shazam, holding his dad's hand. Because like, his dad's like, going to die. I can't do this, right? Yeah, exactly. I'm going to save you, and you can protect us, right? He says, Shazam, holding his hand, and he becomes the new champion. Black Adam becomes the new champion. Yes, Adam does, and, and at that moment, the kid is is shot in the chest with an arrow or some shit by a, a low-tech sniper. And I did feel that a little bit. That scene was well enough put together that I, I felt a little sad, even though... See, I that was, was one of the happen. only parts where my audience laughed. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> there was some... Woo! <laughs> That's was, what I came here for. There was a hoot and a holler. I distinctly remember that. Yeah, basically, uh, to save his family... A lot of these sort of stories, you protect your identity as the hero because they'll come after your loved ones, right? So in this case, they're coming after the loved ones, gives it to his dad, and immediately the kid <laughs> dies like half a second later. It was in slow-mo, so it's probably less time than that. Yes, true. Adam, uh, at this point, after we, we learn all this about him and he kind of retells, yeah, the legend was maybe... Uh, Maybe a little exaggerated. But he's also like, I didn't say any of that stuff. Yeah. You assholes were like, You wrote it down. You're the you're the hero. You're I the read guy. the book you wrote. Yeah. He voluntarily says Shazam and relinquishes his powers. He goes into captivity. He asks Hawkman to ensure that I can never speak it again because trailer bait, some men aren't meant to be heroes. Click, click, boom. Are you ready? And I feel like that's maybe the tenth time. They've said something. I'm no hero. 
over and over again. Like, yeah, but you're going to be, so maybe just stop leaning into that so hard. Yeah, this felt like a bad ending to the movie, even though I knew it wasn't the ending because it just, there had to be more stuff. This is like, oh, this could be an ending and it would be a bad one, but just setting up for the next time they're going to have to pull him out of cryostasis for the real yeah. challenge. It happens at an odd time because right now, they turn him over to Waller in her high-tech prison, which, by the way, was that Harcourt from Peacemaker? It was, yeah. Okay, I thought That's so. That's why she was so sassy. Got it, got it. And it just reminded me again how good that show is and how wrong everyone is who doesn't appreciate... Me? Is that what you mean? You a little bit, but other people too. I remember somebody, people like didn't like the broiness of it, and I thought the broiness was good because... Broiness. Can you just not... <laughs> <laughs> the bro-like humor... Because they're supposed to be dumb. Yeah. I thought, I think bros are dumb, and him being a bro is dumb, and it's funny to laugh at him for being dumb. <laughs> I'm not like, yeah, I like calling people gay. That's funny. <laughs> He's dumb for doing stuff like that. That's what's funny. You're so gay. <laughs> I, I haven't said that in like 10, 15 years. I'm going to cancel years, you right I, now. I had to. I had to. Peacemaker is good. Go watch it again. So on the flight home after... Uh, Black Adam gets cryogenically frozen by the Empire. Dr. Fate sees a future where everyone is saved, but Hawkman has to die in this situation. Adriana and Cyclone are reading the inscription on the inside of the crown, and it says, death is the only path to life, which prior they had said a few times, life is the only path to death. And they're like, that doesn't make a lot of sense. I think you didn't translate it very well. Google, Siri, help us out. So yeah, then they're like, oh no, you got it backwards. Death is the only path to life. Wait a second. Adam just killed Ishmael. So he goes to whatever this DC the hell mirror is. Mirror dimension. Mirror dimension. Okay. Probably and, one of many mirror dimensions. <laughs> yeah. And his charred corpse is reborn as some kind of demon thing comes back to life and he and he crashes their jet fucking I, shit up i like the way that mirror dimension looked yeah i want more of that yeah partially because it has the benefit of as i've said before when everything is fake i'm a little more on board because in there you don't have that like incongruity where oh the building is real but the entire skyline is fake and all the <laughs> heroes are fake and this is like a cool kind of lord of the ringsy looking place with the demon masters or whatever i mean it has sort of an apocalypse vibe to it yeah i liked it dr fate pulls a dr strange and i like this is the one in a million scenario in which we could pull this off without you dying right he he puts up his force field thing to stop the rest of the jsa uh hawkman from getting in and everybody yeah yeah and he goes after uh ishmael himself he has a real dramatic speech about it and this was the perfect moment where I really like the casting choices. Like Adam Smasher and Cyclone, they weren't super interesting characters, but the actors played them well. They kind of didn't need to be there, honestly. They didn't, but I think it was like what you were saying, where it's like, it's that rom-com energy. Like bringing the guy in who did that, like you need some attractive young people to have that kind of line. Yeah, what are all these old people fighting? <laughs> yeah, it's like my grandpa and... The, but... But so despite them like doing pretty good with what they were given, and I, I also just liked the representation of their powers, the four of them in the JSA, they all looked neat and they had their own gimmicks. Yeah. Well, but I didn't prior care. to that point, though, they mostly fought in pairs or separately, which you don't really... Yeah, but I mean, you get the need. gimmick of like Dr. Fate can make multiples and he has like force powers and stuff like that and yeah. Cyclone spins. It just looked cool. It was a neat rendering. But there's a movie missing that makes me give a shit about any of these people. Yeah. So when he's like, oh, you know, it's going to be me. No, Dr. Fate, don't do it. We're friends. Like, <laughs> no, I, I must leave. I've lived a long life. And I was like, I don't care. So you want the four-hour Snyder Cut version of I don't know movie. that I want that, but I'm if you want kidding. me to care about that. <laughs> so Fate distracts Hellboy Ishmael with his uh, multiplicity uh, powers <laughs> here. You know, he's all around him in the room, you know, a million of them on him at once, Agent Smith style. I like this shit a lot. In this moment, he also throws his his voice, his, his mind to uh, Black Adam in captivity. You know, he was only locked up five minutes ago. And then he's going, the time is now. We need you, right? <laughs> and so Adam's got to 
break out of his shit and he's got the thing over his mouth like Hannibal Lecter and so he can't say the word and he's fighting off all the I don't know it's whole, he has no powers but thing. he takes down all these guys because he's got the power of will determination that's true he's in his fucking regular ass body that's like 5,000 years old and there's the superhero thing where I was, sir your bones are dust yeah and it's uh, <laughs> maybe it was a harder life so he had reason to be tougher but he was, he was a slave in a mine, yeah. so that's fair. He, he wasn't a jujitsu master who got powers. He was just a guy who got powers. Yeah, who smashed rocks yeah. for a living. In the meantime, Dr. Fate is knocked down, and he can no longer keep up the force field outside. So the JSA comes in. He allows himself to be killed. He lets himself be sacrificed here by Ishmael. As they're entering the room, and I couldn't help but think, like, they're right that do you need what is the purpose you're like well i can't see my future anymore i guess i have to but like do you do you have to die right there yeah because you're supposed to feel bad <laughs> but you, like you need him to die so you can feel bad yeah i don't know i don't get it it's and then rushed they all corner him there at the throne we almost get the big trash ring in the sky i saw it start to happen <laughs> i was like no they wouldn't and uh Instead, we got a uh, zombie army uh, as, as walking skeletons, and I'm like, okay, damn, they really did watch Suicide Squad because the, <laughs> the momentary trash ring and zombie army at the same time, that's enchantress. And it's just the same thing that many people, myself included, complain about superhero movies where there's not enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're always like, where's the big you know, lights in the sky? And yeah. uh, No, I, I, I can't say that I didn't <laughs> expect it. Yeah, especially just seeing where it was going and seeing what the final villain looked like, which I, I like that design. I think that's a cool design. I, I like the way he's depicted. Yeah, he was just in it for like one minute. Yeah, just a cool looking character, cool moves. But it is the same CG monster opening a portal that all these movies have. That every DC third act yeah. has. And even a lot of the Marvel movies there, maybe it's like robots instead of monsters or whatever, but <laughs> yeah. the same thing. So Adriana and her brother who survived, which... At this point, when I'm seeing them running around the street, uh, hitting uh, skeletons with uh, crowbars and stuff, I'm thinking, uh, you know, Dr. Fate didn't need to die, but the uncle isn't of any use anymore. They could have actually just let him die in the kitchen. That could have been our sad thing. Yeah, I would have felt that probably a little more. Yeah. You spent more time with him. Because you feel bad when he gets shot, but yeah, yeah, he's in the whole first half of the movie, and then this isn't the way you die. You'll survive, right? They make the joke about, like, stay away from electricity. Electrocuted. He's like, I'm an electrician. <laughs> right. But then, it's like, a bad way to go, I think. Then we don't see him for 20 minutes and he shows up again in this fight. And I'm like, well. And that was, that was one of those scenes that was just completely unnecessary and not well done. It wasn't terrible, but it was just, you have this, like, the skeleton army? The ske- and, the, and the citizens versus the yeah. skeleton army. Because it was like... Oh, yeah, then you have this uprising. Yeah, they're trying to cram in a message about, like, you don't need heroes. It's we're the real heroes, and it's about us standing up. Yeah. And it just it wasn't out of left field, because it was sort of there, but it wasn't, like, that important to anything we've seen before. So it wasn't some big moment where, like, yeah, the f- people finally stood up, and they're not going to get stomped on anymore. They just... And it also was stupid. All these, like, just random... <laughs> extras st- fighting CGI extras? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so Black Adam is near death, and he sees a vision of his family from ancient times. And they're saying, no, it's not your time. And then we cut to the the kid, Adriana's kid, and he's holding up the Rockefeller sign, and he's mobilizing the troops, right? And then uh, Adam says... Shazam! And he uh, become he doesn't say it like Dave Chappelle like I just did. But <laughs> <laughs> Shazam, bitch! <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, so sorry that probably blew out everyone's speakers. Then he super powered again, obviously, with a cool um, new suit. This is like the the fifteenth I'm not a hero line, distracting Ishmael as uh, Hawkeye sneaks up behind him. We see him quickly get impaled, just like Fate's vision that we saw earlier. Before we realize, now Hawkman has the helmet. And he's the one who's duplicating himself. Mm. And that was actually an effective twist. Because I thought, ah, they fucking did it anyway? Man, that must have been the only way. Oh, never mind. (laughs) Yeah. I didn't didn't think it was bad, but it didn't. I just feel like they're not going to kill him. After doing all that work, they're not going to kill him. This movie is not that gutsy. (laughs) And he's uh, one of the best characters introduced in the movie. Yes. to, To, like, not make a movie about him later. Except for when he goes, you and me, after school. Yeah, that's stupid. (laughs) 
Black you, Adam rips Ishmael in half the long way like King Shark, and it yeah. looks glorious. Just yeah. He somehow puts his fingers inside the top of his skull and rips him all the way down the middle. Well, he's pulling on the horns, I think, oh, so he's right, using right. those as leverage. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is neat because I was expecting another, like, oh, my God, from the left. Yeah. But he... He like turned into lava, so it wasn't quite as gruesome as it could have been with like seeing guts or blood or something like yeah. that. They're like, "Hey, um, that big blood fountain at the end. Can we <laughs> do something about that? Lava? Yeah, sure. It's red. Yeah, yeah. that works. <laughs> Why, may I ask you, does Doctor Fate's helmet now disintegrate? Shouldn't it have done it either, not at all, or when Doctor Fate died? Yeah." doesn't make any sense. It just, it needed to be there so he could do the thing where he used yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to lean with not at all. Or again, just he could have lived and then done the same thing and it'd been fine. Yeah. Now, Adam takes a seat in the king's throne. You know, it's all fucking dilapidated and fucked up. Now the building is outdoors because he blew the roof off it all those years ago. And they're like, you could be um, the king. And he sits down and he says, it doesn't feel right. And he flies up and back down and he fucking actually destroys it, which I like. You know, there's a loose theme of sort of, you know, revolution and the people taking back their country, city, whatever it country. is. Country. No, and no and, heroes. Yeah, You're the yeah, real yeah. hero. Exactly. Uh, she calls him Teth Adam, which through the whole movie, that's what people call him as per the, the literature they had about him. And he said, uh, I think that's a little old fashioned. And she says, what should we call you? And it goes to close up on his face, and we cut to the title card and the music, which I will say, I actually liked the music in it. The theme music is just yeah. like a big brass section. Like, I couldn't tell you what it is off the top of my head because fucking 10,000 superhero movie theme songs, but like, I liked it at the time. Yeah. It's anthemic, it's fun. I wasn't offended by it, <laughs> I wasn't offended by this lack of creativity. Yeah. Did you stay till the mid credit scene? Yeah, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> we may have lost the recording and had to say that Well, twice. I could be an idiot yeah. anyway. <laughs> so Amanda Waller speaks to Black Adam there. Filming, uh, this is Viola Davis filming from her home <laughs> <laughs> in front of a green screen. Yeah, she got to zoom in her appearance for this movie. She tells him, we're not going to go after you, but you need to stay there in conduct or we're going to have consequences. He essentially says, uh, fuck you, I'll do what I want. No man can beat me. Yeah. And then like Lord of the Rings, they're like, well, I'm not a man. Exactly. He's no one on this planet. And she's like, well, I've got someone who's not from this planet. Oh, yeah? <laughs> we see through the fog a figure lower from the sky in complete pitch black. And as he steps forward, we see the bright colored Justice League Superman suit that we haven't seen in five years since the, the Whedon cut of the very bright oh, yeah, Superman yeah, yeah. suit and Henry Cavill's actual head attached to it, which uh, is not something we got in his past cameo. No um, CG'd away mustache. <laughs> oh, yeah, none of that either. And he says, Fuck you, man. <laughs> I'm here to kick your goddamn ass. He, he says, we should talk. And they both sort of like, all right, motherfucker. All right, sure. You know, and the That's, dick measuring contest begins. That's the after credit scene is they break out the rulers. <laughs> I didn't see that one. That's yeah. my loss. The ladies really liked it. That's, That's your, woo. <laughs> yeah, there's the woos. It wouldn't have had the same effect, but I thought it was like, oh, is it going to be Captain Marvel? No, I guess not. Brie Larson. <laughs> the other <laughs> Captain Marvel. <laughs> yeah. I don't He's know. He's too goofy for him to be the dramatic reveal at the end. Although, I mean, it should have been in this movie in some fucking way. It's bizarre yes. to have them not cross paths and both exist. Which makes me think maybe the Shazam sequel that I saw advertised will have some kind of I cameo. hope that he's involved in that, yeah. I wanted to ask you, did you know that Henry was in it? No. When I get bored, like at work, I'll go to Kotaku, Polygon, and IGN. And they're all three like video game websites, but IGN kind of splits the difference between video games and movies and things like that. Yeah. And there was like a, how did they get that cameo in Black Adam? Mm -hmm. Like, fuck you. 
It's like, yeah. I'm not going to read your article, but like, well, I know the cameo is not Dr. Fate or, <laughs> or Cyclone or anything. Yeah. Like who, no one knew who these people were beforehand. Yeah. It's Michael Keaton. No. <laughs> yeah. I didn't I, care that much. It didn't, it doesn't. Spoilers don't bother me that much. It Are is just you nice. kidding? I could listen to any episode it's of this theater. show. I'm trying to entertain, <laughs> but it's nice to go into things fresh without the. Or the one that always bothers me the most is a movie where Inception immediately comes to mind, where I had no fear about losing any of the characters because I know the snow scene hasn't happened yet. Oh yeah, like yeah. Like that yeah. kind of thing. We're like, oh, I know that's in this movie. I know that person is in another thing later. Yeah. That you've now ruined that that suspense. Yeah. So I knew there was going to be something. I was torn because I'm upset that why is Black Adam, I'm sorry, I did it again. Why is Dwayne Johnson <laughs> <laughs> on the red carpet on the Tuesday night premiere saying, I've been trying to get Henry Cavill back in the suit for a long time, you know. And it's just, a shame we couldn't we for really this one. We really want a Man of Steel 2. We really got to make that happen, you know. And I was like, why are you saying this now? Say it a month from now. Yeah. Say it a year from now. When people are asking about it, and it's now fair game to talk about stuff like that. Yeah, like, why the fuck? But, and so I'm seeing all these other things, like, there's rumors of uh, people who are cameoing in Shazam! Fury of the Gods, which I won't say to you. There was rumored that, you know, Henry was going to be a cameo in this movie. And it's like, I unfollowed two or three... <laughs> different pages that are specifically for like the, you don't talk the to your Snyderverse. mom anymore you no. refuse <laughs> like the Snyderverse and DCEU and those you know I, I like all of that stuff but they get so hung up on like being the first to know and the first to report and like I don't want to know that's why I saw a movie I didn't want to see on the first Friday in the daytime so I was bummed to know that because I would have shit my pants I love Henry but, Superman. But you're shitting your pants every other day for other reasons. Other reasons. That's pure anxiety, <laughs> dietary problems, you yeah. know. But I would have loved to see that. I'm a huge fan of his. There's a six foot version of him right there. There's a five foot version of him right there to my right and left. Uh, you know, I, I just, I would have been blown away. In fact, right now, I'm hoping I'm not saying any of this too loud because my wife's going to see it tonight and she's in the next room. You're a bad person. I am. I haven't told her. She loves him. I feel like it's a little bit fair game. It's not as bad as the Jared Leto at the end of the Snyder Cut. Yeah. Because I thought that was completely unrelated and just like fan service if you wanted that. I get it. Like, I just why don't would you care. even put Dark Side in the trailer? Like, that's a. Yeah. That's a cherry on the top for the end of the movie. But it doesn't. Um, it doesn't spoil anything because it has no bearing on the, it doesn't spoil anything in the sense of it has no bearing on the story. It yeah. doesn't even like tease anything else, just that they met. For sure. I guess I just wanted to say, as much as I try to stay positive and support not be the cynical fandom and, yeah. and, and give all these movies a fair shot, I just wanted to, from the depths of my soul, say, fuck you guys for ruining this <laughs> shit. Stop it. Stop it. It's too much. It's like the studios put too much shit in the trailers. You guys report on every fucking rumor the moment you hear it, because, oh, God, maybe I'm right, and maybe I get yeah, an, and a headline another that follower. Says, like, how did they get that cameo? Also counts as a spoiler. Yeah, <laughs> it does, man. So it's, uh, fuck imagine you guys the uh, for that. the Sixth Sense red carpet and Haley Joel is there, and he's like, "Yeah, I just thought it was really what a neat twist, <laughs> what a cool twist for a movie to have." I mean, to think that he sort of wasn't even there. I won't say who, but wow, you guys are gonna love it. You're like, wait, so the kid is a ghost? <laughs> oh, fuck. All right. So Easter eggs. Was there anything else worth mentioning? I only thought uh, there was two shots where the kid had uh, Wonder Woman and Flash comics in his bag. It is just um, weird to me that like regular universe comics and memorabilia exist in this universe. It made a little more sense in Shazam because it was like after BVS, you know, it's like actual memorabilia from the dudes, you know, and so then mm -hmm. like he's he's got those things and he's wearing a Batman backpack to school or whatever, like. That made a little more sense. This reminded me more of Logan, where like the kid shows him the X Men comics, and he's like, "The shit is not real. Uh -huh. I was there. This didn't happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is make believe." And so I sort of get that version of it. And this is just like, nope, it's just there, comic just book like from like a year or two ago, just like real world. Yeah, yeah. 
a little odd. Nobody but. likes Marvel in there. <laughs> <laughs> it exists, but no one buys any of it. Pros? General thoughts? I do want to give Dwayne Johnson credit. Uh, I've liked him for a long time. I bought his autobiography as a child. Really? Because I, I liked pro wrestling. Like in middle oh. school, I had a pro wrestling period where I liked it. And so the past four or five years, he's become an actor who gets cast in movies or is like the driving force behind a movie getting made. And he plays the same kind of character, charismatic and a smart ass, but like a good guy. So to see him play a character that was much more restrained mm -hmm. and wasn't quippy and wasn't smarmy and... He barely speaks. Yeah, I just, I, that was, I appreciated that. It was nice to see him do something different. Yeah. And uh, the other cast members too, in particular, uh, Aldous Hodge Hawkman. Oh, I really yeah, liked yeah. his performance as Hawkman. And there were times when he sounded like Ron Perlman when you said Hellboy mm -hmm. earlier. I'm like, mm -hmm. that's neat. That's a good delivery. Yeah, I am less familiar with The Rock. I feel like the just general, like, broad action movie thing he does isn't really what entices me to go to the theater. Uh, However, I have liked, I think he did one or two movies with Kevin Hart that I liked. Mm -hmm. And I did see Skyscraper, which was just sort of like a, eh, let's do Die Hard again, you know? Yeah. Well, <laughs> and he, it, was, it was fine. He's a better know? actor than Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yes. But it's the same kind of vibe, just like a unique physical appearance and a natural charisma and just letting yeah. that carry. Was he in the, the Fast and Furious movies? Yeah, like he, he was probably one of the reasons that that series came back. Okay. Introducing that character and the, what he brought to that. Oh, right, because he's got one of the spinoffs. Yeah. Yeah, 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 okay. People Which, at home are like, is this guy fucking serious? <laughs> yes, And that spinoff doesn't work because both of the guys <laughs> who come from the other movie are both the tough guy. Oh. There's no Kevin Hart, although he, spoilers, guys, he had, does have a little cameo in the movie. Kevin Hart does? Yeah. And oh, they're, sweet. But they're both like the giving each other shit guy, but neither of them are funny enough. Yeah. Or they're not given funny enough lines. So well, it's and just, that's, that's how I felt with this movie is like, you're trying to add comic relief from a guy who's like a 5,000-year-old murder machine. Who electrocutes people and rips arms off. <laughs> yeah, like this guy would reach into your body and pull your spine out. You know, like I, I don't really get him. <laughs> <laughs> Doors. Um, I mean, granted, he's playing the straight man, but I just didn't. Uh, anyway, we're talking pros. Uh, so you want to give credit to the, to the Rock for having a different kind of performance. And I, the, Aldous Hodge made me care about Hawkman, made me interested. Yeah. It's not his fault that there's too much in this movie, despite being long, to it's, make me not care long. about. It's only two hours. That's long for a movie that's mainly no. fight scenes. No, to me, like a comedy shouldn't be more than 90 minutes. But I feel like most other types of movies, two hours is sort of the main goalpost to shoot for. Maybe another way to say it is it's long for a movie that doesn't spend much time making me care about the characters. Got it. Yeah, I mean, like there's they, not they a lot of- They could have spent a half an hour making me care a little bit more about Dr. Fate and Hawkman and why I'm not sad when he's dying. I don't give a shit at all. Yeah. Like you could have done something there, maybe shave off a fight scene or like what I complain about in the Maybe other. done something in your childhood to make you feel empathy for others. No. You're like, when he's dying, I don't feel anything no, at all. No, because I, I don't know if you, I want to remind you again, you know this is fiction, right? You know Pierce Brosnan <laughs> is still with us. It's oh, fine. Shit. If you want to go talk to him, he's out Damn. there. Um, so the movie needs to make me feel that. That's their job. I felt that the movie was very well paced. Something I had only a casual interest in and held my attention from start to finish. There was never a point where I felt like, uh, oh, this is long or, oh, it's slowing down too much here. You know, even a 90 minute comedy can feel like a two and a half hour movie sure. if that second act conflict drags on too long. Yeah. And, you know, they just didn't have that with this. So, as much as I maybe complain that there's too many characters or underdeveloped characters, I think part of what does make it work is the jingle in the keys over here. Now, look at the keys over here. Uh, and it's sort of like always moving. I never felt bored. Maybe in that kind of midsection part where like, oh, this could be the ending when he gives up his powers. Yeah. That was a little dull, but I was never like, I never had the feelings that I had in, in uh, like Justice League. Where I'm like, this is uninteresting. You've lost me now for a while. I'm just going to not register that and move on. <laughs> cons. What do we have in cons? Especially as the movie goes on, it, it has that thing that I complain about where it just doesn't feel like it's taking place in a real location. Mm. It feels like sets with a red sky and the same city street over and over and over. And just, <laughs> yeah, I, know, I just don't feel like we're in a place. 
which takes me out of the movie. There are times, say the first Wonder Woman movie, Ares and a huge fucking uh, airfield that's just nothing, mm -hmm. space and explosion, CGI, backdrop all the time. That I don't like. That's what this feels. This isn't but as bad this, as that, but that's what it feels like. This didn't feel like that to me at all. I, I was I was in it. I think part of it that does work is that we're in an unfamiliar place. And so it's sort of just a vague Middle Eastern location or whatever because I don't have an expectation for what this place looks like. Uh -huh. It's like when, you know, in Star Wars, they show up on another planet for a few minutes and then they cut out whatever. You're not really thinking about, like, that's not really what Cincinnati looks like. You know, like... <laughs> I don't know. Or, or like, it's like, this Gotham looks like Chicago. If it's a foam wall painted to look like bricks, you go, well, that's not Cincinnati. That's <laughs> a foam wall. It's the Warner Brothers lot. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I, it, none, of, none of that stuff really uh, registered to me. I felt like for a movie that has a lot of special effects, I was in it. I think really the only cons for me is just I wasn't that invested in anybody in particular. You don't want the, the kid to get murdered or whatever, but like, you know... In general, it's just sort of whatever. I, I think one you don't criticism, want the kid to get murdered, but you know, <laughs> no, no, I'm saying like aside from that, what I don't know. I think there was a fair criticism saying that it had one of the most forgettable villains in the DC universe, and I think that's true because he had such little screen time that I can barely picture what he looks like, and I saw it two days ago. He looks like the villain in True Lies. Who's also the guys like in uh, Training Day? You ever get your shit pushed in? <laughs> or he's one of those guys in Training Day, I think. That's what my dad used to say when tucking me in at night. Except I'm wrong because I don't think that's the guy in True Lies. They just look similar because maybe I'm being a little racist slightly. I'm not trying to. I think I get them confused. I was just letting you talk because I don't get the reference. It is the guy. For, he looked, whatever. He looks like the villain from True Lies. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I didn't even think about that. He is a bad villain. And it's not his fault. It's just they don't. This movie is like the villain is him and also being a hero is the villain and wanting heroes is the villain and Black Adam is the villain and Intergang is the villain. Which uh, is and maybe something that works about it. Viola Davis is the villain. A lot of movies, a common complaint, like Batman movies in particular, is that, okay, we give the villains all the screen time. We don't give our main character enough attention or development or whatever. And this movie is strictly about his arc from uh, rage monster to possible redeemable anti-hero guy. For that to land better, you need more or a better scene of the consequences of his rage, not a flashback from 5,000 years ago where it seems like he mainly killed bad guys. Yeah. He didn't seem like he changed all that much. Was there a shot? Oh, no. It was an injustice. Because I was saying, I just watched something. Yeah, Superman deflects an arrow. It was just like that thing in uh, uh, White Knight Harley. She deflects the shot and it, and it somebody hits, else. hits the guy. Um, I can't remember his name. Fucking Batman? Wibbly or what, you know, whatever, whatever the fucking guy who was obsessed with her. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like that where uh, Superman deflects a bullet and it like hits Jonathan Kent or something like that. And he's like feeling self-satisfied. Like, ha ha, I'll show you. Oh, fuck. Mm -hmm. You know, we could have got one of those. For Black Adam, like, um, maybe saving the kid and raging out on the dude, and then maybe he accidentally did kill the kid or something. Yeah, like, that's too extreme in for saving this, him. As much as this movie wants to pretend that it's extreme and brutal, that's too extreme for this movie. <laughs> True. But I agree with you. That would have been better to see the consequence. Yeah. Why you need to give up your powers. Because you can tell someone information, but I feel like the only way we learn, like, the only way we learn enough to change is by experiencing that thing ourselves and as know? an audience we need to see it yeah you can't just say you're right i'll never say the word again you need to make sure i don't say it i'm yeah i'm a menace okay rating oh uh, like a two and a half and I, I don't think that's bad it was a fun sunday morning it's a good movie when i don't have something else to do and i'm wide awake and it's the start of a day a popcorn movie fun to see on a big screen yeah i was thinking um <laughs> i always grade from top down of like well, do I have? Really, I don't really have a lot of problems with it. So I mean, so it starts. Every movie starts as a perfect movie, and then you shave away. 
Yeah, again, I'm looking like, like maybe we should change it instead of numbers. We should just be like an A to F because if you get a question wrong, you no longer have an A plus, right? That's how I look at it, you Uh know? So it's like if you had some jokes that didn't land, okay, now you're down to the A minus, right? I feel like it's a solid B, which to me is a four or a three and a half. Yeah, if, if you felt that way, I get it. Like yeah, I just wouldn't. I was entertained the whole time, and you know, even though there's certain things where I'm like, eh, at no point was I was like, this is dumb, or what time is it? <laughs> when is this over? I, I never felt like that. I guess I'm probably literally the opposite, where I'm like, yeah. I'm starting it. I don't hate this, yeah, but I feel nothing. Yeah. So you need to <laughs> fill the meter up, <laughs> and yeah. this movie filled it up to about two and a half. Where I was like, that's <laughs> better than nothing. Yeah, but. I mean, that's a, that's a yeah. solid Ben Polanski rating, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. If you look at your other two and a halves, they'd be like, God damn, he liked Black Adam that much? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And I'm just in a good mood today, too. So maybe I'm, it's the same two and a half as the other two and a halves. I'm just nicer about he it. He got drunk at 9 a.m. and then went <laughs> no. to the movie at 10 a.m. And uh, so he's feeling pretty loose. Yeah. This is Robin. Thanks for checking out the Bat Fanatic podcast with Sammy Warman. All right, that is our show. Thank you guys for uh, checking out this duo episode that Batman is not even in. We like to talk about these other DC properties sometimes. And to show you how rarely we do it, I actually said Hawkeye at one point. Truth be told, I said it a few times, but I was able to cut those out. But if you heard the one, you win. I don't fucking know. Anyway, if you like the show, follow us at BatFanAddict on Instagram for giveaways and more. Leave us a sentence or two review. Let us know what you like about it. And a five-star rating means a lot, helping us spread the word. We will return, as promised, with the whole gang talking about the Emmy Award winner from Batman the Animated Series, Heart of Ice.